Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Is there more to Buzz Aldrin's story than just his lunar footprints? In an unexpected twist of events during the Apollo 11 mission, Aldrin claimed to have seen a mysterious flying object on their journey to the moon, fueling speculation about extraterrestrial life beyond our planet. That's only the beginning. Get ready to investigate the strange structures he suggests to exist on the lunar surface, hinting at an even more incredible discovery, the potential of ancient civilizations or perhaps visitors from other worlds. From unusual lights to hidden lunar abnormalities, Aldrin's story is more than simply a moonwalk. It's a trip into the unknown, where the moon's secrets could hold the key to revealing mysteries far beyond Earth. In this video, we'll look at Buzz Aldrin's incredible claims, which may make you reconsider everything you thought you knew about the moon. Who is Buzz Aldrin? But before that, let's dive into who Buzz Aldrin actually is. Buzz Aldrin's name is well known not just in the world of space exploration, but also in the world of extraordinary talent. Buzz's upbringing foreshadowed his remarkable future. He graduated near the top of his class with a Bachelor of Science degree from West Point. But he did not follow in the footsteps of his father, who wanted him to manage a flight crew. Buzz, on the other hand, had his gaze fixed on the sky. He aspired to be a jet pilot. He joined the United States Air Force and flew 66 combat flights in Korea against communist forces. Then he wanted to broaden his expertise by attending MIT and becoming a test pilot. His remarkable capabilities led him to NASA, where he was assigned a special mission in 1963 to develop spacecraft docking and rendezvous systems. This person was smart and skilled. Buzz didn't stop there. He participated in underwater training to prepare for the demands of zero gravity. That paid off handsomely when he boarded Gemini 12 in 1966. During this mission, he completed three spacewalks totaling 5.5 hours. That was a record at the time. We can't forget mentioning how Buzz didn't freak out when their radar failed. After that happened, we began to get some program alarms. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. He recalculated all docking maneuvers by himself. That's some serious problem solving. Later, he joined the backup crew for Apollo 8, but he had no idea that he and his friend, Neil Armstrong, would go down in history on Apollo 11. Considering his knowledgeable background and immense expertise, it is evident that he is a trusted source. Uh, when I saw the light come on and the ground mission control says 60 seconds, we're still 100 feet in the air. I didn't want to disturb this expert on my left. Whatever he claims about the moon and the Apollo mission must hold some degree of credibility for sure. The Apollo 11 mission. Apollo 11 is more than a mission. It's a legend that changed the course of history. The entire planet held its breath, expecting something extraordinary to occur. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy declared that humanity would land on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The job was clear. Get there, land on it, and then return. Isn't it simple? This incredible voyage was to be undertaken by three fearless astronauts. The commander was Neil Armstrong, who led the way. The dream team was completed by Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, and Michael Collins, the command module pilot. A big rocket launched from Florida on July 16, 1969, carrying these space warriors. It entered an orbit around our planet, bringing it one step closer to the moon. They circled the moon and three days later were ready to make history. Armstrong and Aldrin boarded the lunar module, dubbed Eagle, and set off for the moon's surface. The anxiety was palpable. Then, on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong literally took the big leap. He descended the ladder, touched the moon's surface, and exclaimed, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The entire world stood in awe as this historic event unfolded. Rock, huh? Yes, sir. You better believe it. Put a pledge in there. Yeah. Almost all pledge. She likes it. It's a matter of fact. <laughs> Soon after, Aldrin joined him and the two walked across the lunar surface, collecting rocks and making history. They left a U.S. flag and a plaque that read, We came in peace for all mankind. 
That's a big claim. They spent a total of 21 hours exploring this alien world on the moon. Then it was time to return to Earth. Imagine the world holding its breath once more as these space pioneers returned home. They splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii on July 24, 1969. It was a triumphant moment, and people all over the world rejoiced. Apollo 11 was more than just a mission. It represented human achievement. It demonstrated that we are capable of reaching for the stars and touching the moon. It's a story that inspires us to dream big and reach for the stars. The flying object? Okay, let's get into a little cosmic story involving astronaut Buzz Aldrin on Apollo 11 and a UFO sighting that had some people buzzing with excitement. So Apollo 11 was on its way to the moon. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were going to make history. They were not far from their destination, floating through space, when Aldrin noticed something unusual. It's important to note that we're using the term UFO in its most literal sense here. It is an acronym that stands for Unidentified Flying Object. So it's not always aliens in green suits with guns. Sorry to burst your bubble, but the story is still captivating. Buzz Aldrin spilled the cosmic beans during a recent Ask Me Anything session on Reddit. 98%, 95%. That's what they told us. He described an incident in which he noticed a light outside his spacecraft, Apollo 11. That light appeared to be right alongside them. Buzz told the story, On Apollo 11, en route to the moon, I observed a light out the window that appeared to be moving alongside us. But as usual, there's a more practical explanation. Aldrin went on to explain that this was not a passing alien spaceship. Instead, there were other things that it could have been. Is that a possibility? It could have been sunlight reflected off one of the spacecraft's panels, those flat pieces used throughout the mission. So technically it was unidentified, but not extraterrestrial, according to Aldrin. There will be no third person encounters here. As cool as UFO sightings are, this isn't the only one from spacefaring people. Another astronaut, Leroy Chow, claimed to have seen four mysterious lights during his mission. However, his experience was not as out of this world as it appeared. But, as Buzz Aldrin pointed out, it might not be aliens. However, the mystery isn't solved yet, and questions remain unanswered. It's worth noting that another astronaut, Edgar Mitchell, has some very different ideas. He believes that not only have UFOs been seen on Earth, but that the government has engaged in a massive cover-up. Although he hasn't personally had a close encounter, he claims that they are out there. But here's the catch. Buzz Aldrin, the man who witnessed the moonlight UFO, has a different take on the big question of whether we are alone in the universe. His response is a no. He believes there is life somewhere among the stars. The odds are pretty good with billions of galaxies and trillions of stars. Aldrin told the Reddit universe, the probability is almost certain that there is life somewhere in space. While the truth may not be known, it is an intriguing cosmic story that reminds us that there is still so much to discover in our vast universe. During the flight, now some believe Buzz might have misunderstood the sighting owing to his space sickness that is commonly experienced by astronauts. Motion sickness was truly one of the challenges that astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission, including Buzz Aldrin, faced. Yes, even these space heroes were vulnerable. These astronauts, you see, had to go through a range of medical tests. They had to pass rigorous tests before even being considered for the space program. It didn't stop once they were inside. They had to have yearly checkups, including one a month before their birthday, to ensure they were in good health. Before the Apollo 11 mission, they were put through rigorous testing, including daily medical exams a month before takeoff. And if they became ill or injured at any point, they had to admit it. Consider yourself in space, feeling queasy, but unable to tell anyone. That's exactly what happened on the Apollo 8 mission when Commander Frank Borman became ill. His co-workers had to deal with vomit and other debris floating around the cabin. However, Borman didn't want to tell mission control about his condition because everyone could hear it over the open channel. As a result, they required a solution. They introduced a closed-loop communications channel for the flight surgeon to privately communicate with the astronauts during the Apollo 11 mission. But guess what? Some conspiracy theorists spun wild stories out of it. 
believing it was either proof that the moon landing was a fake stunt or that Armstrong and Aldrin met aliens on the moon. In reality, they discussed something far less dramatic. For instance, taking anti-diarrheal tablets during the moon landing. They also took motion sickness pills in case they became ill. Space sickness is similar to motion sickness in that it occurs when your inner ear and eyes send mixed signals to your brain. In the weightless environment of space, your body becomes confused. Ayla, when we first get to space, we feel sick. Your body's really confused. And so, you know, you're dizzy, your, your lunch is floating around in your belly because you're floating. Resulting in many unpleasant symptoms. Space sickness can cause nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headaches, and other symptoms. Now, let us reveal to you that Buzz Aldrin experienced space sickness during the Apollo 11 mission. However, you probably haven't heard much about it because NASA wanted to focus on the positive and avoid any negative news. But Buzz later discussed his space sickness in his autobiography, interviews, and documentaries. So why did he do it? Not just to reveal some astronaut secrets, but also to assist other space travelers. He wanted to demonstrate that, hey, even space heroes get sick. A mixture of dizziness and becoming disorientated and sometimes nauseous as well. And that's perfectly fine. It all comes down to being human. Buzz Aldrin became ill with space sickness on the third day of the mission. His stomach started doing somersaults while he was running experiments in the command module Columbia. He became dizzy and disoriented when he moved his head around. It's not easy when you're millions of miles away from home, but being the trooper that he is, Buzz informed Mission Control and his fellow crewmates, Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins, of his condition. He attempted to treat the illness by taking medication, resting, and moving slowly. He even ate some crackers and drank some water to settle his stomach. He was concerned that his space sickness would jeopardize his mission or portray him as less than a space hero to the public. Buzz, on the other hand, persevered. He overcame his space sickness and went on to accomplish incredible feats, such as becoming the second person to set foot on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. Hence, it is very unlikely to suspect what he claims about his findings just because he experienced motion sickness. It seems quite evident that he was in good health by looking at his performance on the moon. On the moon. Now let's take a look back at the incredible 21 hours Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong spent on the moon during Apollo 11. They did some amazing things up there. Buzz's first amusement was to take a selfie. But wait, this wasn't any ordinary selfie. It was the first selfie ever taken in space. Buzz was in space, and they were using an ultraviolet camera to photograph the stars at night. A good shot took about 5 to 10 seconds with this camera. The sun was shining and the view was spectacular as they traveled through space. Why don't I just take a picture of myself, Buzz reasoned. That's how the first space selfie was born. However, in order to take a proper selfie, the camera had to be attached to the spacecraft. The camera is fixed. So Jim Lovell is going to have to get that thing pointed just right at the right star system. Shut off the rest. So it was technically equivalent to using the most expensive selfie stick ever. The lighting in space wasn't ideal, but that wasn't Buzz's fault. It was due to the spacecraft's positioning. Jim Lovell, his fellow astronaut, was inside, so he wasn't responsible for the lighting. Not to forget the famous boot prints. It wasn't like stepping on sand or regular dust when Buzz and Neil stepped on the moon. Moon dust resembles talcum powder. When they stepped down, their boots left a distinct print. We've got to get a good shot of this, Buzz reasoned. However, there should be a before and after shot. So he chose a smooth spot, snapped a before photo, and then put his boot down. This is how the famous boot print on the moon came to be. But one boot print wasn't enough for Buzz, so he created another, less well-known one. The boot and the print are visible in this shot. Those prints may appear small, but each step sprayed moon dust to the sides, changing the color of the surface. Buzz had to go through a tunnel to inspect the lunar module on their way to the moon. Neil decided to have some fun while he was there. He lowered his head through the tunnel upside down and photographed Buzz. It's a funny shot of Buzz inspecting the module while wearing an Omega watch. The instrument panel on one side of the lunar module can be seen through the triangular windows. Neil's window was on the other side. Finally, 
One of the most memorable images is of Buzz Aldrin saluting the American flag on the moon. It had been less than an hour since he had taken his first steps on the moon. Buzz had planted the American flag as a symbol of their historic journey, and he saluted it. It's a moment that will live on in history. Unusual Discoveries on the Moon Aldrin stated that during his time on the moon, he observed unusual structures and formations that do not easily fit into our understanding of natural geological features. These anomalies made him wonder if the moon harbored any hidden secrets, such as a base or an artifact from an ancient civilization, or even something of extraterrestrial origin. The moon's far side, also known as the dark side, is largely unexplored. Because of the moon's synchronized rotation, it is always turned away from Earth. This side is like a cosmic mystery, a place where the unexplainable can wander, and we can only speculate about its incredible possibilities. Aldrin's concept taps into the mystery of this hidden lunar landscape, sparking our interest and our imagination. Could there be hidden structures on the moon? His remarks sparked a frenzy of excitement, with people scouring lunar images for signs of artificial construction, ranging from towers and bridges to complex installations. While some of these findings may be due to our brains seeing patterns that aren't there, Aldrin's perspective as a veteran astronaut adds weight to the subject. However, Aldrin's fascination with the moon goes beyond mere speculation. He is actively advocating for increased lunar exploration, particularly on the far side. His goal isn't just to spark our interest, but to uncover information that could be critical to humanity's understanding of the universe. Consider the possibility of ancient structures or alien bases on the moon. Discovering and studying them could lead to technological breakthroughs, reveal previously unknown history, and reshape our understanding of life in the universe. It's a thrilling cosmic treasure hunt that reminds us that the universe is full of mysteries waiting to be discovered. Images from NASA You may have heard some wild stories about NASA photographing mysterious structures on the lunar surface. Sounds mysterious, but is it true? This lunar legend is based on a nearly two-decade-old image from the U.S. Department of Defense. The Clementine spacecraft captured it during its six-month lunar mission in 1994. The image depicts the moon's south pole, but the so-called alien building is difficult to spot. Look to the left of the moon image near the east-west meridian. Near the edge, there's a large crater named Boltzmann, and just above it, there's a tiny black perfect rectangle. Some people immediately thought, alien artifact? Is it possible that it's a black monolith? The Boltzmann crater is approximately 75 kilometers wide. So if that alien building was real, it would have to be enormous, like more than 20 kilometers long. The truth is that these kinds of lunar anomalies have been proposed before. For a long time, people have been looking for signs of extraterrestrial life on the moon. Amateur lunar observers have captured panoramic images of this region, as has NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. However, NASA has yet to discover an alien structure on the moon. Nobody knows what other mysteries await us in the universe. Buzz claims there is extraterrestrial life. Buzz Aldrin, one of the first humans to walk on the moon, has seen more stars and the infinite cosmos than most of us will ever see. The kicker is that he has some pretty cool ideas about what's out there. Aldrin didn't hold back during a Reddit Ask Me Anything session. He expressed his belief that the universe isn't just a vast, empty space devoid of life. There may be aliens in our Milky Way galaxy, and there are billions of other galaxies, Buzz said. It's almost certain that there is life somewhere in space. That's a bold statement, and it has many space enthusiasts nodding in agreement. The universe, with its countless galaxies, stars, and planets, is like a giant playground for the possibility of extraterrestrial neighbors. Buzz also made an important point. Space exploration is the key to finding these cosmic companions. We must venture into the great unknown, investigate distant planets, and look for signs of life. Who knows what we might find? But let us not get too far ahead of ourselves. The truth is that we have only begun to scratch the surface of space exploration. There is a lot more out there. We've sent astronauts to the moon, rovers to Mars, and telescopes deep into space. However, there is still a universe of mysteries to be discovered. The main thing is that it's not just about aliens. 
Space exploration benefits us here on Earth as well. Technology developed for space missions frequently trickles down and improves our lives. Consider GPS, MRI machines, and even baby formula, all of which have their roots in space exploration. Buzz Aldrin's enthusiasm for aliens, on the other hand, is contagious. He believes that life will be discovered somewhere other than our home planet, Earth. It simply takes time and effort. Should we now keep an eye out for little green creatures with antennae? No, not exactly. Extraterrestrial life may not look like we expect. It could be microscopic microbes or intelligent beings on a planet light years away. When we find it, we might not even recognize it. So, in Buzz's opinion, the universe is a massive cosmic treasure chest. And we're the explorers out to find the hidden treasures. It's a quest that has sparked our interest for centuries, from ancient stargazers to modern scientists. As we travel through space, Buzz Aldrin's voice reminds us that we are not alone, not only in the universe, but also in our quest for knowledge. We're all on this cosmic journey together, and who knows what incredible secrets we'll discover. Now it's time for our subscribers' pick. Apollo astronaut breaks into tears, claiming the moon is not what you think it is. Buzz Aldrin claims to have seen a light flying alongside them, possibly a UFO. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it becomes an unidentified flying object. But there may be more to the story. Did they make some sort of contact? Or maybe get a better view of what they were looking at? It's possible that what they came across was of such nature that they had been told to keep it a secret. And that secret had been haunting Buzz for so long that he broke down in tears while warning others that the moon is not what everyone thinks. What secrets could he have come across while on the moon? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Moon's harsh environment. Life on the moon is not for the faint of heart. In fact, the opposite is true. The moon, unlike Earth, is not a friendly neighbor. It's a really harsh environment. Let's start with air, or the lack of it. There is no atmosphere on the moon. That means there will be no air to breathe and no protection from the sun's harmful rays. Up there, it's like a vacuum, and you can't survive without air. And don't even think about swimming on the moon. It lacks both oceans and lakes. There isn't a drop of water on its surface. Water is necessary for life as we know it, and the moon is completely devoid of it. The temperature of the moon also fluctuates. During the day, the temperature can reach a scorching 253 degrees Fahrenheit. When the sun goes down, the temperature drops to a bone-chilling minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. That is far too extreme for any living thing. And if you ever want to live on the moon, you should walk carefully. Because the moon's gravity is only one-sixth that of Earth's, you'll bounce around like you're on a trampoline. To move around without stumbling, astronauts had to develop a hopping walk. Despite these obstacles, scientists have discovered a promising location for a moon base at the lunar south pole. It has something valuable, and that is iced water. So, living on the moon is a difficult job, and we're not quite prepared for it. But who knows what the future will bring? Life once existed on the moon. Although it may sound like science fiction, new research suggests that our lunar neighbor may have once been habitable. According to a study published in the journal Astrobiology, there were two times in the moon's distant past when it could have been a welcoming host for life. One of these periods occurred around four billion years ago, shortly after the formation of the moon. It was emitting water vapor and other gases into space at the time. The other event occurred around 3.5 billion years ago at the height of lunar volcanic activity. These outgassed materials could have formed liquid water pools on the moon's surface and created a protective atmosphere that could have lasted millions of years on both occasions. This atmosphere may have even had a magnetic field to protect any potential life from the sun's harmful rays. While the moon currently lacks a significant atmosphere, it does have a thin layer of gases, such as sodium and potassium, that are attempting to fill the void. While there is no direct evidence of life on the moon at this time, this research suggests that life may have existed there in the past. Who knows, maybe microscopic organisms like cyanobacteria found on Earth could have thrived in lunar water pools. It's an intriguing concept that suggests the possibility of life beyond our home planet.
And who knows, maybe future moon missions will uncover more secrets, including evidence of ancient lunar life. The salt ice. The University of Washington researchers made an incredible discovery about Jupiter's moons. Astronomers discovered 12 more moons orbiting the gas giant using a high-powered telescope in Hawaii about tw 20 months ago. And that brings the total number of moons orbiting Jupiter to 92. Such as Europa and Ganymede. You've probably seen images of the red streaks on Europa's surface. Scientists believe it's a combination of water and salt, but it's unlike anything we've ever seen on Earth. They discovered a novel type of solid crystal that forms when water and table salt combine under extremely cold and high pressure conditions. These are typical conditions on Jupiter's moons, where miles of ice cover vast oceans. The big news is that they discovered two types of salt ice crystals, one with two salt molecules for every 17 water molecules and one with one salt molecule for every 13 water molecules. This explains why the surface of the moon appears more watery than expected. This isn't just exciting for space enthusiasts. It's also a game changer in chemistry and energy research. On Earth, hydrates like these crystals are used for energy storage. The team made this discovery by squeezing a tiny bit of salty water with teeny diamonds under tremendous pressure. They had not expected these crystals to appear. It was a wonderful coincidence. This could have implications for life beyond Earth as well. These moons may be the best places in our solar system to look for extraterrestrial life because their water is stable for long periods of time. Maybe Buzz was right about extraterrestrial life after all. Missions to explore these icy moons will be launched in the coming years, and we may find some clues about life in our cosmic neighborhood. Panspermia. Consider the possibility of life being delivered from outer space to our planet, Earth. Doesn't that sound like science fiction? Well, this concept is called panspermia, and it suggests that life could travel through space on meteorites, comets, or asteroids to reach new planets. It's not so much about how life began as it is about how it might spread. Researchers are now debating whether this theory holds water. Some argue that space is simply too hostile for life to survive. Space radiation and vacuum may cause DNA and RNA damage in spores and microorganisms. But here's where things get interesting. Some tough little critters on Earth, such as tardigrades or water bears, can withstand incredibly harsh conditions, including space vacuum. That begs the question, could life, in the form of dormant spores and bacteria, be drifting through interplanetary space right now? There are various types of panspermia, such as lithopanspermia, which suggests that microscopic life could travel through space on debris from planetary collisions, and radiopanspermia, which suggests that organisms could travel through space using radiation pressure from stars. Another twist is pseudopanspermia, which proposes that the building blocks of life originate in interstellar dust clouds and end up on planets where life develops naturally. This theory of life from space isn't new, it dates back to the 1830s. Even though some scientists are skeptical, there is mounting evidence to support panspermia. Experiments on the International Space Station have demonstrated that bacterial spores and even seeds can survive in space's harsh vacuum. It's almost like nature's survival kit. It's not just about Earth. It's about looking for life beyond our own. So while we're not sure if panspermia is a cosmic messenger for life, it's an interesting theory that keeps our eyes on the stars and our curiosity lit up. Human activity. Another way of spreading life in space can be as a result of human activity. It's not just a crazy thought. Bereshit, an Israeli lunar lander, was transporting thousands of books, human DNA samples, and even some tiny water bears, also known as tardigrades, to the moon. The plot twist is that it crashed. Yes, it did not land as smoothly as expected. Nova Spivak, the founder of the Arch Mission Foundation, was on a mission to create a backup of planet Earth, so he filled this lunar library with 30 million pages of information and DNA samples from a wide range of humans. Also, those tough tardigrades. When the crash occurred, Spivak was faced with a major dilemma. Had he just spread life on the moon? He's not too concerned about water bears colonizing the lunar surface. However, the tardigrades are known for their survival abilities, but it is unlikely that they can resurrect themselves in the absence of water. In fact, Thanks to the last-minute addition of DNA and the way it was incorporated, the lunar library may have survived the crash relatively well. 
Scientists are still figuring out how to build the best libraries possible for future generations, whether on Earth or in space. So a lunar library containing human knowledge and possibly dormant DNA is now resting on the moon. Space exploration is definitely a subject of the future, and we are going to get more and more answers with rapid advancement of technologies. So keep your minds open to see some wildest theories proved to be possibly correct sometime in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.